Good morning and welcome. Uh, I'm David DiBiase, an Associate State Director with AARP Virginia, and we are thrilled to be working with the um, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at George Mason University to bring you this program. Uh, our founder, Ethel Percy Andrus, was a champion of lifelong learning, and I'm going to read a quote from her. She said, the eagerness to learn to pioneer in the development of new skills and new abilities, to broaden the personal scopes of understanding, to freshen the mind with new ideas and new concepts, to achieve new heights of knowledge. This eagerness to learn has no age restrictions. So studies have shown that our brain is stimulated when we learn new things and makes new neural connections. And ARP encourages you to find things that you can challenge your brain, things that you enjoy and things that cause you to grapple with new ideas. Um, it's important to note that it's never too late to find a new cognitively stimulating activity. And we know music is good for, for the brain. So with that, I applaud you for joining us today. And I wanna thank um, Jennifer DeSano, the executive director of OLLI Mason, and she'll be on next to tell you a little bit more about the program and introduce you to it. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, and thank you so much to AARP for this collaboration. The Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at George Mason University has been in existence for uh, now 30 years. And we serve individuals seeking enrichment, socialization, educational opportunities uh, in the form of lectures and clubs and trips, as well as volunteering uh, within the organization through curriculum development and teaching. There are many things you can learn and do at the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at George Mason University. And I want to welcome all of you here today, uh, especially our Mason, our current Ollie Mason members, as well as, as well as those of you who are joining us through the AARP connection uh, across Northern Virginia and across the country. So thank you so much. You can learn about uh, Ollie at Ollie, O-L-L-I, Dot gmu dot edu and um, find out all the things you can do uh, and learn more about what we have to offer. Today, I have the privilege of um, introducing you to a wonderful, wonderful person <laughs> and her students, uh, Dr. Linda Appelmanson. She's an international Steinway artist. She um, serves as the director of the School of Music at George Mason University uh, College of Visual and Performing Arts. And for many years, Dr. Monson has enriched the OLLI program, uh, bringing her students to pro provide musical performances. Her accomplished, talented, and energetic students, we're always happy to have them when they come and visit with us. Uh, we are so fortunate to have a great relationship with the university to, uh, to share with us the talented, wonderful students at George Mason University. So with that, I am so proud and happy to uh, welcome Dr. Linda Appelmanson and her students. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for that beautiful introduction. I want to say a special welcome to all of our wonderful Ali friends and a special welcome to our AARP friends who are joining us today. We are so excited to be able to bring to you wonderful solo piano music uh, representing uh, several centuries and many countries throughout the world. And I think you're going to find today's program is diverse uh, the music is compelling, and some of the composers you will recognize, they're some of your favorites, and there's other composers that I think perhaps may be newer to you, and I hope that after today's performance, you will say to yourself, I have just discovered a wonderful new composer that I want to learn more about, and I want to uh, uh, delve deeper into uh, this composer's music. So you're in for an enriching hour. I'm so proud of the students we're able to uh, bring to you today. I want you to know that some of our students are right here uh, in Northern Virginia. Uh, some of our students are in China, uh, in Nanjing. So they're coming to us from different parts of the world. Uh, and since we are doing this by Zoom, 
we are able to make this work, even though we may have a 13 hour time zone difference. So we are thrilled that we can have uh, awesome music coming forward from all parts of the world to the comfort of your own home right now. So um, just to share very, very briefly, we are so proud of our Riva and Sid Dewberry Family School of Music. We have approximately 400 music majors. We offer degrees, the bachelor's, master's, doctoral degrees. And uh, we are uh, so proud of our world-class faculty, our tremendous facilities. We're an all Steinway school. We have beautiful Steinway grand pianos in the practice rooms beautiful halls. We're very, very blessed with a wonderful school of music. And we are proud right now to be able to present uh, some solo piano music from, uh, um, in, in this case, the students that I am uh, currently teaching at Mason. So uh, I would like to begin uh, with a wonderful uh, performance of Padre Antonio Soler, a Baroque composer. And uh, this work will be performed by Luke Ratcliffe. Uh, Luke is a tremendous pianist who uh, will be graduating with his master's degree uh, from George Mason University uh, in two weeks. Uh, he has done uh, wonderful work while he's been at Mason. Uh, he's performed with our Mason Symphony Orchestra. He's also performed with the McLean Symphony uh, as concerto soloist. Uh, he has uh, won numerous competitions. Uh, Luke is also uh, a student of the Juilliard School, and he distinguished himself uh, at Juilliard as a performer, as a composer, and at George Mason University, he has distinguished himself as a tremendous scholar. Uh, he has presented lecture recitals uh, and as an awesome performer. So today you will get to hear Luke uh, with several different pieces, but right now he's going to kick off our program with a work by the Spanish composer, Padre Antonio Soler. Over to you, Luke. Thanks so much, Dr. Monson. What a, what a lovely introduction, thank you. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Luke Ratcliffe. I'm currently uh, a master's student at George Mason. This first work that you're going to be hearing is by the Catalan Baroque composer, Padre Antonio Soler. Uh, he lived and wrote during the high Baroque era and was sort of a transition composer into the early classical period. His work comprises mostly sonatas, single movement sonatas for keyboard instruments available at the time, particularly harpsichord. But he spent much of his life um, cloistered off and um, in, in quarantine, just like us. He took <laughs> his holy orders as a, um, a uh, Benedictine monk um, in, in Spain when he was only 23 and spent the rest of his life uh, cloistered and writing music there. So um, perhaps we all will feel some kind of um, solidarity <laughs> with, with this music. So I, I hope you enjoy this piece. It's, it's very sunny and bright and... Um, uh, and hope you enjoy.
Thank you, Luke. What a wonderful performance. Thank you. Our next performer of the hour is G.A. Kim. And G.A. will be performing a work by the French Baroque composer Rameau. And I would like to share a little about this marvelous pianist you're about to hear. G.A. Kim uh, was born in Seoul, uh, South Korea. She did her bachelor's degree uh, at uh, Seung Kyo University in Seoul. She then came to the United States and did a master's uh, degree at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And she is pursuing now the Doctor of Musical Arts degree uh, here at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. And we're so proud of GA for the wonderful work that she's doing at Mason. She's been selected as a collaborative pianist, uh, what we call a GTA or a teaching assistantship within the collaborative piano arena. And she works with uh, many uh, singers and instrumentalists within our school of music and is doing a fabulous uh, job uh, in that role as well. So GA, would you please share a little about the, uh, the work by Ramo that you are about to perform? Thank you, Dr. Monson. Um, hello, I'm Jie, and I'm going to play the John Philippe Ramos beautiful piece titled as Le Lapel des Oishius. It means birds calling. Ramo was a violinist, music theorist, organist, harpsichordist, and later a French composer in the Baroque period. Ramo's characteristics, such as a fine texture, rhythmic variety, the elegance of details and picturesque humor are well depicted in his harpsichord pieces. Also, he often composed imitative music which impacts 19th and 20th century French musicians. He wrote uh, Le Lapel des Oisius in 1724 as part of his suite in E minor. This piece is a descriptive piece that Rommel usually depicts nature in his music. The ornamentation in the melodies make us recalling bird call and fluttering of wings. We can listen to duet of some birds in this piece. Originally, this piece composed for a harpsichord, but I played with modern piano. Imagining harpsichord sound would be great while you're listening to this music. I hope you enjoy this beautiful music. <laughs> And GA is going to also present a terrific work by Ludwig van Beethoven. We are now moving to the classical era. GA? Mm -hmm. Ludwig van Beethoven's Piano Sonata, opus number 101 in A major, was written in 1816. This sonata marks the beginning of what is generally re regarded as Beethoven's final period, where the forms of are more complex, ideas more wide ranging, texture more polyphonic, and the treatment of the themes and motifs even more sophisticated, 
than before. This piece very exemplified this new style and Beethoven used the newly expanded keyboard compass of the day. The second movement, uh, Beethoven wrote Viva a uh, alla Marcia, so it takes March characteristic in ternary form and is characterized by dotted rhythm, harmonic disc location, and alternation between static and arturando. But in the uh, trio part, you can listen to ridicule part different from the beginning. Please enjoy this music.
Thank you, GA. Beautiful performance. Thank you so much. Now we're going to move on to the Romantic era. And particularly, we are going to the country of Spain. And so to get us there, uh, we are going to be introduced to the marvelous pianist, Guy Young. Uh, let me see, where is Guy Young? Uh, Guy Young is going to be uh, presenting um, uh, a beautiful work by Isaac Albanese. And let me tell you a little about Guy Young Lee. Uh, Guy Young uh, grew up in uh, South Korea. She uh, did her bachelor's uh, uh, at the Catholic University of, uh, of Korea. Uh, she also did additional studies at Iwa Women's University uh, in Seoul, a wonderful school. And I've been there. We've had a number of students uh, coming from Iwa here to Mason. Uh, uh, but I'm so thrilled that Guy Young uh, chose to uh, come to George Mason to do her master's of music in piano performance. And I've had the opportunity to be working with Guy Young uh, a number of years now. She did the master's. She's now in our DMA program, Doctor of Musical Arts program. Uh, she is also uh, one of our collaborative pianists uh, with an assistantship. She works a lot with our singers, uh, helps in our opera program, uh, just has a real, real affinity uh, with the, the vocal artists and very, very proud of the, the coaching and the, the um, uh, performing that she has been able to do uh, with our wonderful uh, singers. Um, Guy Young has distinguished herself at Mason in so many ways, uh, again, as a performer and as a scholar. I think you will find right now that you're about to hear an incredibly exciting, dramatic work by the Spanish composer, uh, Isaac Albanese. Please welcome Guy Young Lee. Thank you, Dr. Manson. <laughs> uh, it's time to go to Spain. <laughs> I'm going to present one of the most beautiful Spanish music. The title is El Puerto. It is in the first book of Iberia. Iberia is composed by the Isaac Albeniz. Albeniz is one of the most famous Spanish composer, pianist, and conductor during the Roman, Romantic era. Iberia has four books of three pieces each, and it is a suite for piano composed uh, between 1905 and 1909. Number two, El Puerto is D flat major and fast movement. Um, Albania is inspired by port city of El Puerto de Santa Maria, Santa Maria in southwestern Spain. This music is in the style of dance based on the insistence rhythm in 6-8. So you can feel the atmosphere of the hustle and bustle of a seaport in the beginning and the quiet atmosphere are down in the end. So you will be fascinated by beautiful Spanish music. I hope you enjoy, thank you. Thank you. 
Wonderful performance, Guy Young. Thank you so much for sharing that work. And to all of our Ali friends, you will remember the very first class this semester featured piano trio with Guy Young and uh, uh, violin and cello. They did marvelous uh, works and presented an entire program of chamber music. That was the first class in our session of this semester. So Guy Young has had a very, very busy semester, not only doing all of the solo uh, work and collaborative work with singers, but also an entire chamber music program with her trio as well. So congratulations on that. Um, now we are going to move to um, another Spanish composer, Manuel de Falla, and this will be presented by uh, fabulous pianist Jinyu Zhang, and Jinyu is uh, from China, and she's currently in China, uh, right now in Nanjing, and so uh, she will be sharing uh, with us from, um, uh, from that city in just a moment. But to tell you a little bit about uh, this extraordinary young artist, Jin Yu um, uh, did the uh, bachelor's in uh, China and uh, her, uh, her school was uh, Xinghai Conservatory of Music. And then she came to the United States for her master's and did a master's degree at State University of New York, Fredonia. Uh, then she went back to China, uh, has been an assistant professor I uh, in a uh, uh, school there was there for five years doing that and teaching and uh, and uh, helping to educate the next uh, generation of, of uh, pianists and then I uh, really wanted to do the doctor of musical arts degree uh, to further her studies came to George Mason University I'm so privileged to have Jing Yu I uh, in the studio and uh, Jing Yu I uh, is uh, one of our doctoral students in piano performance. Uh, and due to the pandemic is now, uh, she's not been able to uh, come back to uh, the US uh, this semester. So we have been doing all of our lessons and classes, everything remotely, uh, but Jin Yu continues to shine and, and do great work. Uh, so dedicated, so uh, intensely loyal to the program. One thing that has always uh, stuck in my mind is being quite an extraordinary experience when the pandemic, uh, uh, when last year that, uh, in March, when the campus shut down and uh, suddenly students could no longer uh, have access to the instruments on campus, uh, our international students couldn't go home. They couldn't, they were just, I'll say a little bit stuck in a situation that was very, very challenging. So uh, uh, Jin Yu is an example of someone who uh, had no instrument, uh, was here, we needed to make things work. She had a doctoral recital coming up. Uh, when you talk about extraordinary dedication and someone who just says, you know what, we just, we just charge ahead. We do this, we don't let all these circumstances uh, 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 get in our way of, of putting our art forward. Jin Yu learned a program, memorized her program um, in her mind without access to an instrument. Eventually, we were able to get a piano to her, obviously, and she, she was then able to perform the doctoral program. But uh, honestly, I, I, that is just, a, how shall I say, one of those extraordinary circumstances when someone says to me, what are some of the most uh, amazing things that have happened uh, with students during, during this pandemic? That example of what Jin Yu has been able to do in the midst of some of the most um, challenging and difficult circumstances will always be forever um, imprinted in my own mind as, wow, <laughs> you know, but what, what we try to do, you know, in terms of making the music happen, um, our students are living examples of making the music happen. And music is indeed central to us as for all of you on this call, you're, you're participating today because you know how music touches you and you know that you wanna be a part of something, something that's really quite extraordinary, something that's able to transport us perhaps into another world or something that gives us a sense of uh, beauty or a sense of drama, a sense of uh, 
just it impacts us in such incredible ways. And so for our students, this time during the pandemic has called on all of us to give forth every ounce of our being, to make the music happen and to continue to uh, dig deep into what it is we, we love and we care about. And each student that you are hearing today has done this in his or her own way. And so I just have such profound respect for each one of our students at Mason and how they're able to persevere and continue to make great art and great music happen. So now, without uh, saying anything more, Jinyu, would you please uh, uh, talk to us about the Defaya Nocturne? Over to you, Jinyu. Thank you so much, Dr. Monson. Hi, everyone. My name is Xin Yu Zhang. Today, I'm very happy to share you a very beautiful piece, which is Nocturne in F minor by Spanish composer Manu Defaya. Defaya was born in 1876. As composers of the late Romantic era, he was one of the most important Spanish composers of the early 20th century. His music was strongly influenced by flamenco and other music of Andalusia, the region of southern Spain where Defaya was born. This nocturne was completed when um, he was only 15. The influence of Chopin is evident not only in the formal structure of the nocturne, but also in the figurations of the accompaniment. The young composer, however, was already demonstrating an interest in national elements. This is particularly clear in the model character of the principal theme, which is typical of the folk tones and dances of Andalusia. I hope you enjoy this particular Spanish style nocturne. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Jin Yu. Thank you so very, very much for that beautiful performance of Defaya. And now we are going to uh, have a wonderful work um, uh, performed by Joaquin, well, excuse me, the composer is Joaquin Serena and the performer is Megan Slay. Uh, Megan is a Richmond, Virginia native. Uh, Megan did her bachelor's degree at BCU at Virginia Commonwealth University. She came to George Mason University for her master's degree. Uh, and I've been very, very privileged to work with Megan uh, during these past uh, several years for her graduate degree. Megan will be graduating in two weeks with the master's uh, in piano performance. I'm so proud of the extraordinary work that Megan has done during her time at Mason. Uh, as both a performer and a scholar. And I'm very happy to also announce that Megan will be starting her doctoral uh, studies at Mason in the fall. So uh, the joy of working together continues. And uh, Megan has been the winner of several competitions, most recently uh, uh, the uh, Virginia State Music Teachers Competition. Um, and she's just been really, really active in uh, performing in many venues and uh, has has just done incredible work while she's been here with us at Mason. So I'd like Megan if you would tell us a little about the wonderful work by Joaquin Tarina that you're about to perform. Good Thank morning you, everyone. Um, today I will, we will move right on to a friend and contemporary of the fire, Joaquin Tarina. Today I will play in his sweet pittoresque, the first movement, Sous les Orangers which means under the orange trees. He composed this in 1909, uh, close to the time of Defaya in Albanese. Um, Torino was born in 1882, and he died in 1949. He was a native of Sevilla um, in Andalusia, the southern province of Spain. Sweet Pittoresque is a three movement work. This first movement, Sevilla, depicts the aromatic orange trees that grow along the streets of Sevilla. These are the same oranges that make orange marmalade. They're very bitter. <laughs> and you will hear very characteristic Spanish harmonies, such as the Phrygian mode. And there are dance-like rhythms that marked with accented notes that are reminiscent of flamenco dancers and guitar-like arpeggios. In the music of Spain, it's about feeling. This piece, I can feel the breeze move through the orange trees. I hope you enjoy.
Thank you, Megan. Ah, what a delightful performance of that awesome work by Joaquin Tarina. Thank you. So you might wonder, well, there's a fair amount of Spanish music. What's the deal with all this Spanish music? Well, um, we all learn the entire canon of what we need to know in terms of uh, the various composers. But I do like to make sure my students have some uh, uh, some introduction and, and background with the Spanish composers because they're not always done as much as some of our other uh, 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 composers. And I have a particular interest and affinity for Spain. I lived there for some time. I worked with uh, Spanish uh, pianists and uh, it's a particular love of mine. And so I like to be able to share some of the, um, I'll say some of the really unique, awesome things about, about this uh, music. So I'm always thrilled when, when we can share uh, some of these great works. Um, we're now going to move on to um, the composer Franz Liszt. This is a composer that I will dare say almost all of you know and love, I, I hope. Um, and our next performer, uh, is Yeyao James Howell. Yeyao is also in China, uh, coming to us right now from Nanjing. And let me share a little about this wonderful uh, young man um, and what he is doing. Uh, uh, James uh, is from Nanjing. Um, and uh, so he, he, his American name is James, Yeyao James Howell. Uh, but James uh, did his bachelor's degree at Nanjing Normal University. Um, I also am a visiting guest professor at Nanjing Normal. And so I've been uh, uh, to that university uh, a, a number of times with performances and lectures, et cetera. And so we have had uh, a number of students from uh, Nanjing Normal uh, come to Mason and it's a, a terrific school. Uh, the students are, well, they just do great work. And I am so thrilled that James uh, uh, came to George Mason for his master's degree. We had the uh, honor and privilege of working together for his master's. Uh, James is an extremely uh, dedicated, hardworking uh, young man who um, he just it makes good things happen and very, very impressive uh, with his uh, uh, musical and academic um, uh, uh, prowess. And uh, James is now in the Doctor of Musical Arts program uh, uh, at Mason. But again, due to the pandemic uh, and due to the uh, travel situation, uh, he has not been able to be with us uh, in Fairfax uh, th this year. So again, our studies have been uh, remote and James has been um, having his lessons and all of his classes while he has been in Nanjing uh, this year. Uh, James has his uh, a doctoral recital coming up uh, soon as almost everyone on this call has a full length uh, 60 minute solo recital happening within the next uh, week or two. And so what you're hearing today is a tiny, tiny little slice of something much, much larger that each one uh, has been working on. Uh, but I'm extremely proud of, uh, of Yayala James Howell and the incredible work that he has been doing for us at Mason. So James, would you please present um, the list Waldeschrausen and tell our audience about this great work. Thank you, Dr. Manson. Uh, so I will be performing Franz Liszt the Waldeschrausen, uh, which the English name is The Forest Memories. Um, this piece is uh, this piece belongs to list to uh, concert etudes. And it shows the scene that the winds go through into the forest and generating uh, specific sounds. The piece begins with very soft dynamics and to uh, Im imitate the quasi um, whisper in the forest. Then with the development of the music, the winds are getting stronger and the whisper turns to a uh, sing like melody. In the middle section, which is also the most uh, um, virtuosity part the sonority goes to the climax and the mood is getting stronger as well. Then after a cadenza uh, uh, section, the whole mood um, came, came down and the scene goes back to the beginning uh, section, ends with quietness and uh, calmness. Um, so please enjoy it, thanks.
Thank you, James. Terrific job. Thank you. And next, I'd like to introduce another um, wonderful pianist to you, uh, Yingfei Li. And Yingfei uh, was born in Shangzhou, China. Uh, she did her bachelor's degree. She did a dual degree uh, from East China Normal University and also from Colorado State. Uh, it was a dual degree program. So she worked for several years at uh, Colorado State uh, and also uh, East China Normal. She then uh, did a master's degree uh, in Bloomington, Indiana at the uh, Indiana University Jacobs School of Music and did the master's degree in piano performance. Uh, Ying Fei uh, has come to George Mason University for the Doctor of Musical Arts degree. I'm so privileged to teach Ying Fei in my studio here. Ying Fei has also been chosen as a collaborative pianist um, with an assistantship. Uh, she is working with the instrumentalists and the singers and with many, many uh, students in our School of Music doing great things in the collaborative uh, realm as well. Uh, Ying Fei is the winner of various competitions and uh, she's about to uh, tell you about a terrific work by Johannes Brahms. Please welcome Ying Fei. Thank you, Dr. Monson. Hi, everyone. I'm Ying Fei Li. Uh, I'm going to play a character piece from Johannes Brahms, Klavier Stück, uh, Opus 119. So, Brahms was known as a German composer and a pianist from Romantic period, but he was influenced deeply by the classical traditions. So this piece is titled as Rhapsody, which is the last piece from this piano piece collection. And at the beginning of this piece, it starts with a heroic, um, and a confident march-like theme, the energetic sound will remind us his earlier rhapsodies, Ops uh, 79, and then it transferred to a delicate and a graceful sensual section, which makes a huge contrast. However, the peaceful feeling is interrupted quickly and returns to our energetic and energy uh, First scene. Now, finally, the piece surprisingly ends with a E flat minor ending, which is the parallel key of its start, the uh, E flat major. So please enjoy this um, complex piece. <laughs> Thank you. 
wonderful job, Yinke. Thank you so much for sharing that beautiful Brahms work. Thank you. And now we're going to go back uh, uh, to Luke Ratcliffe. And Luke is going to present uh, a short work by Grieg and also an etude uh, by Rachmaninoff. So Luke, would you please share a little about uh, To Spring from Grieg? Yes, so um, this is this piece is written by Edvard Grieg, the um, Norwegian romantic composer. Grieg was noted for writing large collections um, called books of what he what he called lyric pieces, which are normally relatively short, poetic, and very evocative works that um, mostly have to do with his homeland of of Norway and. Um, there are different, you know, features of nature and things, you know, were taking place in um, Norse mythology, and so this particular work is from one of those um, books of lyric pieces. This is called "To the Spring," and um, it's very evocative of this the rebirth of this season that we're in right now, and um, you can really see the nature coming back to life out of the winter and the flowers blossoming and um, the rain coming down. So I um, hope you enjoy this piece. And, and share a little about the Rachmaninoff, please. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so this this next work is um, written by Sergei Rachmaninoff. He was one of uh, the great composers of uh, the, the end of the 19th century and into the first half of the 20th century. He's known mostly as a piano composer, and he wrote these two different books of etudes or, or studies, but he 
change the title around a little bit and call them Etudes Tableau, which um, is French for picture studies. So these, it, each one of these etudes is meant to be extremely evocative and plays a lot with um, texture and um, pretty much the full gamut of piano writing up to that point. Um, this particular work is the first picture study of his later set. And originally he had um, subtitles in mind for each of these pieces, but a lot of, some people think they're apocryphal or that, um, they, you know, several of them have been lost. My vision of this uh, first etude is like crashing waves on um, sharp rocks. And so as the water comes down, you'll see the teeth of the rocks come up. And so there's lots of this, um, these overlapping waves and it's um, it completely contrasts with what you just heard in the Greek. So please enjoy. Thank you, Luke. So appreciate awesome performances. We are going to now go to a wonderful composer, William Bolcom. And uh, this will be our, our finale performance today. And I'm asking uh, Yayao James Howell 
to come forward once again. And would you please tell us about this marvelous work? And I think uh, our audience is going to find uh, this work is so amazing and really fun. And so it has all kinds of extra techniques that you're not going to be expecting. So be ready for some cool surprises in here as well. James, would you share it please about the Volcom? Okay, so I'm gonna do a performing William Volcom and the Serpent's Kiss. And I will introduce William Volcom first of all. And so William Volcom who was born in 1933 is an American composer. And uh, he is a composer of chamber um, operatic, uh, vocal, choral, and uh, like ragtime and uh, uh, symphonic music, and uh, he is now still alive. So the piece I'm going to play is called the Serpent's Kiss. So Serpent's Kiss belongs to his piano suite, The Garden of Eden, uh, which refers to some myth stories. This piece is actually a very unique and unusual piece with a lot of unusual notation. It requires, uh, requires to some body movements and uh, instrument to generate the sound, such as uh, wood tapping, uh, tongue clacking, and uh, whistling. Volcom would like to uh, demonstrate that anyone is able to take participation into um, music, even if using the simplest method, like clapping on the wood of the piano. Moreover, uh, more, uh, moreover uh, Volcom also applied ragtime style in this piece, which you can hear very typical uh, ragtime characteristics, such as a tempo, syncopations, and so on. Um, so please enjoy.
All right. <laughs> so the American composer, William Bokum, performed by our Chinese pianist, Yayao James Howell. Wow, what a great finale. <laughs> Thank you, James, uh, for the playing, for the tapping, for the uh, clicking and every, every other aspect that you had to do to make this happen. Awesome work. What a fun, terrific way to end today's concert. Could we show all of our pianists whatever way you wish, if you have an emoji or you have uh, Whatever, whatever way you can show your appreciation, then it'd be awesome to thank all of our pianists. And we'll just pretend we're in the concert hall and we're all bowing together. And we're all uh, grateful that we've had this opportunity to be able to share our music with you, our wonderful audience. I hope that our music has brought you pleasure. I hope that you've been transported into a different world this morning and that you've been able to let the music uh, really uh, just, present a sense of happiness and a sense of real joy to your day. Um, I'm so proud of each and every one of our pianists. I want to thank Ali for the opportunity to be able to present these marvelous performances, uh, especially Jennifer DeSano and all that she does as our executive director of Ali. I want to thank Meg uh, Brzezowski, who is our uh, our uh, technical assistant. She made all of these videos work perfectly and it just does everything to make sure that technically we can produce these. So huge thank you to Meg. I want to thank all of our AARP members who've joined us today. And David, thank you for having your, your, your members uh, share with us today. I hope that the music of our George Mason University piano uh, students has really been uh, a sense of joy. And I hope that all of you will be able to um, come to Mason when, when we're able to do our live performances again and be a part of the many, many offerings that we have within our School of Music. And for those of you that are wanting to see and hear more Mason performances, please come on to our, our, our website. You will see music.gmu.edu. We have lots and lots of events and we're so proud of each, uh, each area that we have within our School of Music. But today it's all about piano. And for today, it is very much honoring and recognizing these seven amazing graduate pianists that I am so privileged to teach uh, here at George Mason University. Thank you, our wonderful audience. I'm, we're going to be happy to take questions. Uh, and so I'm not sure, uh, Meg or Jennifer, how do you want to proceed with, with our questions? Okay, um, mostly what I have right now in your chat and your Q&A is congratulations and thank you for a wonderful performance and every kind of clapping and thumbs up and woo <laughs> you can imagine. So if anybody wants to ask any actual questions, they can either raise their hand or type it into the Q&A or the chat. Uh, Linda, I just want to say thank you so, so much for this fantastic morning. It's been such a joy listening to all of your beautiful, wonderful, talented, uh, extraordinary students. And they're, uh, they're just, it's a, I can hardly put it into words uh, how much we appreciate uh, your, your students and uh, your sharing of your joy of music with us and, and spreading uh, the good feelings and, and the emotions that come with this music that you prepare. I just want to thank you so very, very much and uh, let you get back to your questions. And uh, if people want to see this, it's being recorded. It's going to be on YouTube at the Ali George Mason University YouTube channel. So you can go back and take a look at it there. And then uh, we're going to put some information on how to join Ali in the chat for our AARP members. And thank you all for this extraordinary morning. Thank you. And the one question you do have, Dr. Munson, is how can we support the music department at Mason? Oh, I'm so happy for that question. <laughs> we have many ways that you can support our uh, music uh, school. One, please come attend our concerts and please come be a part of uh, the joy of music making that we have. If you wish to uh, help uh, support with scholarship assistance, 
we are always thrilled and, and very honored uh, to be able to uh, accept scholarship donations for our students. Um, we have uh, the Friends of Music at Mason. One can contribute through that. You can also, if you come onto our site, uh, music at gmu.edu, there's a special button, uh, donate, and uh, you can certainly contribute online. But the primary, primary way is through our scholarship fund. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Ali for your scholarship support and for all of you that are Ali members, uh, your, uh, you are supporting scholarships. Luke Ratcliffe is our current Ali uh, uh, piano scholarship recipient. And uh, I know that Luke is incredibly grateful for the scholarship support of Ali. Um, but again, if any of you are so inclined and wish to help our school of music, we are we would be blessed and, and uh, grateful beyond belief uh, to have you share your, your financial gifts uh, through, through scholarship support for our students. It goes directly uh, to help them. And uh, again, we'd, we'd be thrilled to have your participation in that way. <laughs> 